Hi everybody, Eve here with a message about what is wrong with our food environment these days? What is wrong with our current food environment? I probably don't even need to answer this question because I'm sure if you're watching, you have ideas of your own. Because the food landscape can certainly be tricky. I mean, with fast food at every corner, the availability of processed food being more accessible, vending machines, it's like cupcakes, gelato, chips, oh my, what are we to do, you know? And it's not just, you know, the food environment that's out there. It's, you know, the candy that's on the co our coworkers' desk. It's the food that our grandma pushes onto our plate. You know, it's going out to eat with that friend that just doesn't seem to care and just orders anything. It could feel pretty hopeless, you know, to address and finally heal these eating issues. So I could see why it could be so tempting to blame our eating environment. You know, food seems to be so magical with like it's like amazing ingredients that just beckon us from the freezer or the refrigerator. I mean, like they seem to be calling our names. Oh, my goodness. You know, um, so I get that part, too. I feel like our ancestors had it so much easier. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that, you know, um, that there was no processed food or we didn't have these ingredients in our food. Um, I mean, depending on how many generations we want to go back, you know, in our ancestry to eat, we actually had to go out and hunt or to pick or gather our food for that day. There were no preservatives. There weren't even refrigerators. So I totally get it. It's really hard, especially this time of year that the weather has gotten cooler. We're spending more time with our family and friends and we're eating out and it could all just be so distracting. So I even want you to reflect. I want you to reflect on your 2018. What made food hard in this last year? You know, what situations were challenging for you around food and eating? Just think about those different situations. Hey, if you have a pen and paper, you might even want to list those things down. What made food hard this year? If you think about it, I bet a lot of times had to do with the food environment, the food that was there. So I totally get that. And even though it's so hard, blaming food is just not the answer. Blaming the food environment just doesn't really get you anywhere, you know, because if you want to wait until our food environment finally evolves or our coworker takes her candy off of her desk or our pushy family members stop forcing food on us, um, we're going to be waiting a long time, you know, if we're going to wait for all these things to change. And... There's even good news here, by the way. The good news is that there are new laws in effect. Fast food chains are, you know, um, now serving things like fruits and vegetables and their marketing guidelines, you know, but the progress is slow. So as I said earlier, waiting for our food environment to evolve to help us with our eating issues, you're going to be waiting a really long time. And so the way to address this is not by looking out there, but it's by looking in here, you know, finally looking at ourselves. So it's time to address you. So what are your food choices, your behavior around food, your habits, your patterns? You know, after all, this food thing isn't going anywhere. Okay. Excuse the drama, but I just had to. This food thing isn't going anywhere. As long as you are alive, you need to relate with food every single day and multiple times a day at that. So this food thing, it's time to address it. And that's why learning how to eat in an empowered way is so important in this day and age. And so this means addressing things like meal planning basics. Not having a rigid meal plan, but just knowing what your next meal is gonna be. You know, practicing supportive eating behaviors, understanding the very basics of nutrition science, building resilience, you know, knowing what to do when your eating doesn't go the way you want it to, how to pick yourself back up and start eating in a way that you like. 
you know, attuning to yourself, learning how to attune to your body, uh, your emotions, your thoughts, and cultivating a positive body concept. So to help you with all of this stuff, um, and to help you end 2018 in an empowered way and hit the ground running in 2019, I want to give you a head start. And so I want you to answer these four questions. If you want to go get a pen and a paper, go do that, because you might actually want to write down your answers because it might help direct your focus um, over the next few days. So you might want to get a paper. There are four questions that I want you to ask yourself. And if you want to send me the answer to any of these questions, I'd love to get your answers. You could email me or you could private message me if you're watching this on Facebook. So question number one. Question number one is, what were your biggest challenges with food and eating in 2018? So what were your biggest eating challenges in 2018? Was it that, you know, you kept on getting overstuffed? Is it that you let yourself get too hungry at work? Just list out. Maybe both of those things, right? So question number two is, what impact did this have on your life? What impact did these eating challenges have on your life? So those times that you got too full, did you notice that you were more irritable with your friends and family? You were unable to be present and enjoy the rest of the gathering? Or that time or those times that you didn't take lunch to work, did you notice that you were irritable, that you really couldn't focus and be productive? Notice the impact it had when um, on your mood, on your energy levels, on your ability to focus. And question number three, how would your life change when you overcome these challenges? How will that impact your energy levels, your mood, your focus, right? And so question number four, I want you to take some time with this question, is what is one small thing you could do in the next 24 hours that could bring you closer to what you want? What is one small thing you could do now, in this day, in the next 24 hours, that could bring you one small step closer to the results that you want? After all, we can only take one small step at a time. So an idea might be to go to the grocery store and to get a vegetable that's easy to prepare and to eat. So maybe getting a bag of baby carrots. Uh, another intention could be maybe um, when you're done watching this, go for a walk around the block. Another great intention could be, you know, sitting down and planning your next meal, maybe making a balanced meal. Um, or if you don't know what a balanced meal is, maybe your next step could be to go online and to actually educate yourself on what a balanced meal could be. Another possible next step could be to fill out the food freedom application. Right. So if you're interested, I could personally help you clarify what you want to accomplish in 2019. Help you really clear, uh, help you create a really strong, clear vision of where you want your relationship to be like in 2019. From there, I'll help you brainstorm the things that are sabotaging you, keeping you stuck, and making it hard to have sustainable, you know, uh, eating patterns that feel good to you. And from there, there, you will know your very next step on what you need to focus on, you know, to start your year off right. So as I mentioned earlier, it's more important than ever to learn skills on how to navigate food and eating in this crazy food environment. So I really invite you to, you know, think about what you want to do in the next 24 hours to take a step closer in eating in the way that you want it to be. And one of the things I really want to invite you to do is to fill out the food freedom application. Again, it's on my website at www.vitamineve.com. I included a link um, either above or below. I'm not really sure where you're watching this, so it might be above or below. Um, and... Um, because, you know, it's time to be an empowered eater, you know. I want you to be able to eat in a way that feels good for you, no matter who's around, in any environment, any time of year, no matter what is happening in your life. After all, cupcakes, chocolate flavored chips, and gelato aren't going anywhere anytime soon. So thank you for watching. Happy eating, and I really hope I get to hear from you. Bye.